Hi everyone, it's Mike here. Today I'm going to do another CD rip pile video. Um, these are CDs I have in three separate piles that I need to rip pretty soon. Um, I still have CDs in the last rip pile I need to go through, but I'm going to work on that today. I'm not going to rip these CDs on video because frankly I have too many and it would end up being like a five hour video trying to get through all these so i'm going to try to just discuss a little bit about these releases and why i picked them up um two of the piles are cds that i purchased recently and one pile is made up of cds that i borrowed from the library um, my local library and let's start off with the first one here we have the CDs that I've gotten from the library, we have Marvin Gaye, The Very Best Of. It seems like a pretty basic compilation that has a lot of tracks on it. It says it's from 1994. We got 22 songs on it. We got a <laughs> nice picture of Marvin there. I'm trying to think of what his big hits are. Um... obviously you have what's going on i think the first three are really the big three what's going on sexual healing and i heard it through the grapevine and there's also let's get it on which that's track number six those are probably the big songs that i that i'm aware of um looking at this the motown records release it uh got a little booklet Got a another nice picture right there. He died in 1984. I didn't know that. Oh, the booklet fell out. I'm not going to take a look at the booklet for all of them, but, but because it fell out, I'm going to take a brief look. It has some brief liner notes. A um, little bit about his life. Just a tiny little booklet. The next one, we had another Marvin Gaye. You're the man. Um, I don't recognize any of the songs off of this one, but I believe it is a. It says it's a 2019 re-release. Interesting. I've not heard of this album before. Um, I do recognize the label on the CD. It's the same label as. The What's Going On uh, reissue that I went over in the last Rip Pile video, I believe. Tamla. Tamla. And we have one more Marvin Gaye. It says it's the last concert tour. It says it was recorded in the summer of 1983. Um... Recorded in the summer of 1983, the two-time Grammy Award winner burns through this never-before-released set. Looks like he's got all of his hits. It mentions that it's an AAD, which means it's it was recorded and mixed in analog. You don't see those codes too often um, anymore, but they're on a lot of old CDs. It's called the... I believe it's called a SPARS code, S-P-A-R-S. -S, and they would use that to distinguish between albums that were recorded digitally, mixed digitally, or recorded and mixed in analog. And people wanted to know that, obviously, when the CDs first came out, so they could get the most out of the format. So they kind of knew what they were getting into. Um, I did listen to Run the Jewels for that I believe I covered in the last Rip Pile video. Maybe I didn't, but I I did try to listen to a rap slash hip hop album and I thought it was pretty good. It didn't like blow my socks off or anything like that, but I did find Run the Jewels 3 at the library, so I'm gonna rip that and give that a listen to. I remember downloading this for free because typically Run the Jewels has been 
um, giving away free downloads of their albums as they come out. But, uh, yeah. Gonna have to give that a listen and give my impressions of that as well. What I have next is a group that I've never really listened to, but I saw their CDs and figured, why not? It is Weezer, and I got two albums by them. I believe this one's referred to as the Teal album, because of the color. And then, I don't know if this is called the Black album or not, but it's pretty dark. And it doesn't really say what the name of the album is. Um... They're a group I've not really listened to, but I've I've heard people say that they like them, so uh, give them a shot. This next group I've never listened to, but it was in the new releases. It's called Caribou, Suddenly, and I kind of like the rear of it. kind of like the pattern on there. Um, it's supposed to be kind of a poppy... Um... Poppy sort of rock, I guess. Don't know too much about it. And then another artist that I listened to recently, um, R&B artist, is The Weeknd. And they had a couple CDs by The Weeknd at the library. And I believe these are referred to as mixtapes, which I don't exactly know what that means. But... <laughs> We have House of Balloons, and then the other one is called, what is the name of it? My Dear Melancholy. Dear Melancholy. And then this is supposed to be, I know at least this one is, part of a trilogy of mixtapes that The Weeknd has done. And I do have the trilogy here, because they had this as well. It says it contains three discs. And it looks like it has a lot of tracks on it, so I'm not I'm not sure how this is going to sound or what it really is, because I don't understand what a mixtape is, but we're going to find out. Um, then we have CDs. I'm putting these on the ground. I believe these next ones are CDs I got at the local record store. And then two of them I got at Target. Well, let me show you the ones I got at Target first. Here's a group that I've never really listened to, but I wanted to give them a shot. It's Deftones, and the name of it is Ohms. And I've listened to it, and it's actually pretty good. It is produced and mixed by Terry Date who I believe has worked with Rush and Fate's Warning. Um, I'm not 100% positive, but I believe he's worked with them before. And I was really surprised by this album because I've never listened to the Deftones, and it was surprisingly good. I uh, wasn't expecting it to be as good as I um, ended up experiencing it. Um, got this at Target. It wasn't very expensive. I figured, why not? Um, what do we got next? Controversial artist, Roger Waters. This is Us and Them. It is a live performance. Um, I believe this was recorded in 2018. It says it was filled in Amsterdam. Got two CDs. Um... It's got him playing all sorts of Pink Floyd songs, and then it's mixed in with songs from his most recent uh, album, which I can't remember the name of. But I've heard conflicting things about this performance and the sound quality of this album, so I'm curious to give it a listen and uh, give my own form my own impressions. I need a better webcam. I really do. <laughs> they are really in high demand, and it's difficult to get a good webcam these days. Um, because people are working from home, and yeah, it's just, the demand for them has just been crazy. And trying to get a 1080p webcam, especially one that can focus, is very difficult. So I'm just working with a 720p webcam. 
And these next albums I got <clears throat> at my local record store uh, just a few days ago. I was talking about The weekend, and then I liked the most recent album from them, uh, After Hours. And I got his previous album, Starboy, which has two songs that feature Daft Punk. And I really enjoy Daft Punk's latest album. And yeah. Gonna give this a listen. Let's see what I think about it. Next we have Live at, Live at Rock Palace by UFO. And this is part of a series of CDs and DVD packages that are from Rock Palace, which I assume just means Rock Palace in German. <laughs> and I don't know if it's in surround sound. It says it's in Dolby Digital, but I doubt it's in surround sound itself. Um, it looks like it's a pretty decent performance song-wise. It has a lot of UFO classics like Rock Bottom, um, Doctor Doctor, Lights Out. Um, I, I'm aware of all those songs already, and they're looks like they're played at the end of the concert. And these packages have always interested in me. Um, there's Rock Palace packages for Jack Bruce, um, Spirit, and Wishbone Ash, and a couple other groups that I've wanted to have, but I saw this one at the local record store, and I knew I had to have it as soon as I saw it. I'm not sure what the lineup is for this, uh, performance. Like, I'm not sure if it includes Michael Shanker or not, because I know Michael Shanker has... Um, written a decent amount of UFO songs and played on some studio albums. And speaking of Michael Shanker, um, this was in with the Michael Shanker CDs. It's Michael Shanker and Pete Way, and I believe Pete Way is the basis for UFO. I believe he is. Called The Plot. And this is a very... <laughs> kind of amateurish looking package um just a picture of the two and then the logo and then kind of weirdly like a wrong aspect ratio looking picture with the track titles it's from majestic rock records made in england this seemed like it was something that was kind of rare so i and i like michael shanker so i figured i had to have it Here's an album that I've never listened to, but I've listened to some work from the people in the band. It's Nevermind the Bollocks, Here's the Sex Pistols. Um, I've listened to a lot of Public Image Limited, which has the same singer. Um, but yeah, I've never actually listened to this, and it's supposed to be a classic, so it's something I figured I had to have when I saw it. I'm not a big punk fan, but I've listened to some, and I mean, Sex Pistols, I think, are like the band that kind of, not necessarily started it all, but they kind of like made punk really popular, so I'm hoping it's good. And then we have Sofian Stevens, The Ascension, and I've listened to maybe half of this album, a little bit less than half already. And it has a very synth poppy sound, which I wasn't expecting. It uh, has some cool artwork on the back, too. Kind of trippy. Um, I wasn't expecting it to sound like synth pop. Um, his previous stuff has not had that kind of style that I'm aware of. And it made for a pretty enjoyable listen because I'm a huge fan of synth pop. Like um, The Buggles. Uh, who else? I don't know. Like Depeche Mode, um, all sorts of eighties rock. I like Kaja Goo Goo, but uh, yeah, this album sounded pretty good so far. So I'm pretty excited to listen to the rest of it, and I hope it retains some of that synth poppy kind of sound. And then we have the CD releases that I got yesterday at Barnes and Noble, um. Let's start at the top. I am going to open this next CD. It is Retrospective by the Animals. 
and you would know them from the song House of the Rising Sun. Uh, they do a famous cover of that song. And I'm going to open this one because I'm not sure if it's a hybrid Super Audio CD or not. And I looked on Discogs while I was in the store, and it said that the Super Audio CD version and the CD version, they both have the same barcode and the same catalog number, so it's not easy to spot which one is a Super Audio CD. I'm hoping it's a Super Audio CD because it had has the price of a Super Audio CD. It was 19 bucks for a Greatest Hits compilation. I'm getting a lot of mucus built up, so whew, talking is very difficult right now. Is it a Super Audio CD? I believe it's just a CD. I'm not 100% positive, though. Yeah, it looks like it's just a CD. Huh. Although it does say direct stream digital on it. Not how I can, you can't even see it because the camera is such low quality. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's just a CD. It's not a Super Audio CD. I might try bringing my uh, Super Audio CD player out and seeing if it uh, recognizes anything. But yeah, I, I don't think it is. It just says stereo, DSD, and then super bit mapping direct, which is kind of a a generic um, way of saying that they mastered it from a higher resolution than CD audio quality. And then we have Headhunters by Herbie Hancock. This is an album I've wanted to listen to for a long time. It's supposed to be a very good jazz fusion record. It's another... Uh, it says it has super bit mapping, just like the previous release. There's a a DSD version of this album available on certain uh, high res download sites. So it's DSD means it's the same quality as a Super Audio CD. So I might get that to compare with the CD if I like the album enough. I like the album artwork though. Look, at, that looks cool. And this one is a Super Audio CD that I know for a fact. It is a classical record. Um, it's Masordsky, Tchaikovsky, Baroden um, by Fritz Reiner and the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. With They do pictures and exhibition, A Night on Bald Mountain, and others. And what's cool about these, and the primary reason that I bought it, was that they're Super Audio CDs, and they're in surround, and they're in stereo. Um, the surround sound version is just front left, center, and front right, but they're taken from three track stereo uh, ma mixes, and... It's really neat because even though these were recorded in the late 50s, this performance, um, or these performances were recorded in 1957 and 1959, um, these releases sound so good. Like, these are audiophile quality um, recordings for sure. They can definitely be used to test out a system. Or just to uh, really give you an idea of what a great classical recording sounds like. Like, these are crazy quality for the price. And I have a lot of, in the previous, uh, I've previously purchased a lot of these living stereo super audio CDs of classical music. And they all sound phenomenal. So, had to have this one when I saw it. The next one... You might know from the most popular song by Jerry Rafferty, um, Baker Street. Baker Street is on this album. I primarily bought this because 
I have the vinyl record for this album, City to City. Um, my brother gave it to me, and it's a pretty good record. Um, Jerry Rafferty has some good stuff, but uh, I wanted to have it in CD quality too. And it looked like it's an original CD. It has copyright um, 1988 on the rear. So I'm hoping it's a good sounding release. The next one I bought because it's been reissued recently, and I've considered buying the reissue, is Giant Steps by John Coltrane. And this is a very good jazz record. Um, kind of similar in style to like Kind of Blue by Miles Davis. Um, John Coltrane did perform with Miles Davis, and I believe he is on Kind of Blue. But this is kind of Coltrane's... I'm not an expert on jazz, but I think it's one of his most popular albums for sure. And it has some alternate takes in it. It's all in stereo. There is a mono version of this album available, which I hope to get soon. Um, but this looked like it was an original CD release, and a 60th anniversary d Super Deluxe Edition just came out. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try comparing the two releases and see which one uh, sounds better. These next two, I'll show you show to you at the same time. Um, I bought these because they're getting harder to find. And the deluxe editions of these just came out within the last couple of years. And the originals, according to some, sound better. We have Prince's 1999 and Purple Rain. Um, like I said, both of these have had deluxe editions come out recently where they have multiple discs. Um, the mastering on them really hasn't been that great. Uh, the, they're just too compressed, but the original CDs lack that kind of compression that they use to ruin the deluxe editions. So I'm curious to compare these to the CD deluxe editions that I have. Um, Prince is great. I mean, I don't have a lot to say about him really. And then the last disc, disc that we have here. <clears throat> is kind of a silly thing that <laughs> I wanted to have because it was cheap and I also like poetry is The Light in the Attic by Shel Silverstein these are pretty silly releases <laughs> if you've ever heard them before and his poetry is kind of silly and it's really geared more towards children but I found as an adult that they're they're still very interesting to his uh books are interesting to read and these are interesting to listen to as well because he does such a good performance of his own poetry and uh lyrics and clothes good i do not own like light in the attic i do own uh where the sidewalk ends um yeah it it's kind of something that you experience as a kid and then you kind of get nostalgia for it. It's kind of why I bought it, I guess. <laughs> so I remember reading Where the Sidewalk Ends and Light in the Attic. And what's the other one? Giving Tree. I remember reading those years ago when I was younger. And uh, yeah, I had to have this. It says it's a 2009 re-release. Okay. I think that's all for the releases that I have today um I'm going to pop this into my super audio CD player and see if it's an actual uh super audio CD I don't think it is but I want to give it a shot it looks just like a CD typically I'll show you um it's actually scratched too which is kind of pissing me off it has like a scratch towards the bottom which you can't really see and this kind of crappy webcam. <laughs> and then it has like a. Oh, like a part of the edge missing at the top too. Which is really weird. So I don't know what happened there. But I'm going to pop it in my Super Audio CD player. And see if it's a Super Audio CD. Or if it's just a regular CD. Um, yeah. That's all I got for today. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, 
stay tuned for more vids. Uh, I probably won't be buying as much music in the future. Uh, but I may have some impressions of these releases that I've been buying and listening to. I will likely be doing more videos um, related to video games. I'm going to try to do some videos about Bioshock Remastered. Um, I also have a couple uh, other games lined up for streaming. That might be pretty fun. Uh, just stay tuned. And uh, yeah, again, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a good day.